Hello to chapter 109 of Moby Dick by Herman Melville and this chapter is titled Ahab and Starbuck in the Cabin. According to usage, they were pumping the ship next morning and lo, no inconsiderable oil came up with the water. The casks below must have sprung a bad leak. Much concern was shown, and Starbuck went down into the cabin to report this unfavorable affair. Now, from the south and west, the Peacock was drawing nigh to Formosa and the Bashi Isles, between which lies one of the tropical outlets from the China waters into the Pacific. And so Starbuck found Ahab with a general chart of the oriental archipelagos spread before him and another separate one representing the long eastern coasts of the Japanese islands, Nippon, Matsumai and Sikoke. With his snow-white, new ivory leg braced against the screwed leg of his table and with a long pruning hook of a jackknife in his hand, the wondrous old man, with his back to the gangway door, was wrinkling his brow and tracing his old courses again. Who's there? Hearing the footstep at the door but not turning round to it. On deck, be gone. Captain Ahab mistakes, said his eye. The oil and the hold is leaking, sir. We must up Burton's and break out. Up Burton's and break out? Now that we're nearing Japan, heave to here for a week to tinker a parcel of old hoops. Either do that, sir, or waste in one day more oil than we may make good in a year. What we come twenty thousand miles to get is worth saving, sir. So it is. So it is. If we get it. I was speaking of the oil in the hold, sir. And I was not speaking or thinking of that at all. Be gone, let it leak. I'm all a leak myself, I. Leaks and leaks, not only full of leaky casks, but those leaky casks are in a leaky ship, and that's a far worse plight than the Picards, man. Yet I don't stop to plug my leak, for who can find it in the deep-loaded hull, or how hope? to plug it, even if found in this life's howling gale? Starbuck, I'll not have the Burtons hoisted. What will the owners say, sir? Let the owners stand on Nantucket Beach and out yell the typhoons. What cares, Ahab? Owners, owners, thou art always pranting to me, Starbuck, about those miserly owners, as if the owners were my conscience. But look ye, the only real owner of anything is its commander. And hark ye, my conscience is in this ship's keel. On deck! Captain Ahab, said the reddening mate, moving further into the cabin with a daring so strangely respectful and cautious that it almost seemed not only every way seeking to avoid the slightest outward manifestation of itself, but within also seemed more than half distrustful of itself. A better man than I might well pass over in thee what he would quickly enough resent in a younger man, I, and in a happier, Captain Ahab. Devils, dost thou then so much as dare to critically think of me on deck? Nay, sir, not yet. I do entreat, and I do dare, sir, to be forbearing. Shall we not understand each other better than hitherto, Captain Ahab? Ahab seized a loaded musket from the rack, forming part of most South Seaman's cabin furniture, and pointing it toward Starbuck, exclaimed, There is one god that is lord over the earth, and one captain that is lord over the peacock, on deck! For an instant, and the flashing eyes of the mate 
and his fiery cheeks, you would have almost thought that he had really received the blaze of the level tube. But mastering his emotion, he half calmly rose, and as he quitted the cabin, paused for an instant and said, Thou hast outraged, not insulted me, sir, but for that I ask thee not to beware of Starbuck. Thou wouldst but laugh, but let Ahab beware of Ahab, beware of thyself, old man. He waxes brave, but nevertheless obeys most careful bravery that, murmured Ahab, as Starbuck disappeared. What's that, he said, Ahab, beware of Ahab, there's something there. Then unconsciously using the musket for a staff, with an iron brow, he paced to and fro in the little cabin, but presently the thick plates of his forehead relaxed, and returning the gun to the wreck, he went to the deck. Thou art but too good a fellow, Starbuck, he said lowly to the mate, and raising his voice to the crew. Furl the gallant sails and close reef the top sails fore and aft. Back the main yard, up Burton's, and break out in the main hold. It were perhaps vain to surmise exactly why it was that as respecting Starbuck Ahab thus acted. It may have been a flash of honesty in him, or mere prudential policy which, under the circumstance, imperiously forbade the slightest symptom of open disaffection, however transient, in the important chief officer of his ship. However it was, his orders were executed and the Burtons were hoisted. So that was chapter 109. Bye-bye. Till next time with chapter 110 titled Queequeg in his coffin.